Welcome to all you Sagittarians. This is your monthly horoscope for November. Yes, it's a separate video just for November, just for Sagittarius. A lot of people were asking uh, to do that again. And here I am, you know, with a lot of appreci appreciation of you out there. I want to thank you first and foremost, because, you know, this channel is growing. I love it. I love it. Um, it's a two-way stream, right? It's... Uh, uh, whenever I do these videos and I, I uh, get appreciation because, you know, people share it and they um, either, either subscribing it or commenting it or, or asking for a reading, that gives me energy as well. So it's not so difficult for me to do extra then. You see? You see? Anyway, what's going on for the Sagittarians? And um, there are a couple of things that I want to say three things actually. The eclipse, which is less important for you. The Venus in your sign, which I love. And the uh, on the 17th, 18th of the month. And then the Mars square Neptune. That's the most important thing for you. Because uh, Mars is in a fellow uh, mutable sign of Gemini. It's in your opposite sign of relationships. So, And it squares up to Neptune like the whole month. It has gone or it goes retrograde around the 30, 31st of October. So it means for all of us, Mars going retrograde means we have to think about our actions. We have to look at them, investigate them, fine tune them. We are going to get insecure about them because it squares to Neptune, but that's all fine. So that when Mars goes direct around the midst of January, off we go in a new way how we, for you Sagittarians, deal with relationships. So there's something about our relationships. I say our because I am a Sag rising myself. And um, so Mars is doing action. Seventh house is, is uh, our business partners. It's our clients. It's our romantic partner. So with Mars going backwards, it could first and first of all, simply mean that when we are in a relationship, something happened to the person and they have to go backwards. Literally, they um, have to stand still. They, they can't go forwards full force. Whatever it is, maybe they have like a lumbago or, or how do you call that? Something in their back happens and, and they are struggling with that and they can't work and blah, blah, blah. But whatever it is, uh, that's just one example. Whatever it is, this will have a knock-on effect on you as well. They will demand quite a lot. Mars in your seventh house is people that are demanding towards you. It doesn't have to be a difficult thing or, or, or a negative thing, but it's, 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 you know, it's there. They're a little bit more asking for your attention. So it could be another person. On another level, maybe you are single or maybe you are just experiencing this in I have to do my relationship in a different way. There's something about the relationship that I'm doing right now that is no, okay, that's not good. It's not full of integrity. It's not going the right way and I have to review it. That's, and it's going to make you insecure. I'm insecure about it, you know, how I deal in relationship. Maybe you are single and you say, I'm getting a bit insecure. It's not a bad thing. It keeps you, see the beauty of that. It humbles you. It humbles you and ultimately the result is clarity. But you have to go through these unclarities before you are clear. So um, this squares up to Neptune in your fourth house. So this could have to do with your emotional security. you not feeling totally emotional, secure, and that's why, uh, or things that are triggered here, and that's why you're dealing with changes in the relationship. So there are things going on in the relationships that are, you can't put your finger on it. Well, don't try to too much, because if you try too much putting your finger on it, it's going to escape. And the best thing to do is just what I always recommend with uh, Neptunian transits, and I always make that metaphor of when you drive in the mist, what do you do? Exactly, you slow down. You slow down, you don't act too much. So for those of you who are chasers, you know, um, like there's nothing wrong with chasing something. 
Absolutely. But when you feel you're chasing for something that is a bit, meh, that is a bit like with a hidden agenda or that is not so, meh, that is a bit tricky, that is not so honest, then it's good to just stick to the observing state of you being in that car, not driving too fast in a mist and see what happens. Give space. That is also a very interesting one. Um, also allowing, ooh, that is such an interesting one, especially I, I, I'm thinking about my own life. I don't want to make this horoscope about me, not at all, but it's so applicable. Giving space to other people, giving them the space, which is Mars, Neptune, so that they can come forwards with doing things. So, um, and that you're not doing it in their uh, way because it's an ego thing and you want things to be in a certain way um, so it could be that as well you know if you are in a relationship it's going to be a bit more feisty you know that partner is definitely going to act more martial like even if it's a woman you know when you're a man and you have mars in your seventh house your woman starts to be a bit more martial <laughs> so uh, and there's good things about that as well so use that energy to be more uh, doing things together that that um, that uh, demand a lot more action. Doing things together that are demanding a lot more action. Fill in the blanks there. You know, with Neptune, you can use your fantasy for sure. And you can use things that you want for an ideal. But stay realistic, okay? Mars square Neptune, stay realistic. Um, don't force things too much. Let the other person do their thing. Listen to them. Cooperate for sure with Mars in the seventh house. They are they have strength. Also, when uh, the seventh house is, of course, your open enemy. So could be a court case or whatnot. Um, don't go for the hey, it's me, it's me first, and da 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 da. It's not gonna work. It's gonna backfire. So you have to be a little bit more like a Mars in Libra. That is Mars in the seventh house. It's a Mars in Libra. I, I, uh, take, um, I'm listening to what you are saying, considering, and uh, really listening, not like I'm listening because I can tell you something myself. No, I'm listening. And I'm going to tell you my thing as well. And let's just be patient here. It's about patience as well. So it's not easy energy to deal with at all. But ultimately, where it wants you to get is to do relationships in a better way, to improve your relationships, to improve when you're single, your attitude towards relationships, to make them more uh, fun, to make them more exciting, but to communicate about it for sure. Um, and to maybe the most important thing with this Mars Neptune is to be clear about your intentions. You can only do that. If other people are not clear about their intentions, it's out of your control and it's their thing. It's their karma. You um, have to distance yourself a little bit from that if that is occurring. But you can only do you. So make sure that you are acting out of integrity, that you are acting out of love, that you are acting rather to build something uh, than just doing it for just you or destroying something or whatnot. These are the Mars-Neptune messages uh, for sure. And um, yes, and I like this Venus in your sign as from the seven, uh, as from the seventeenth, yes, seventeenth, eighteenth Venus in your sign. That uh, is absolutely lovely. That is absolutely lovely. That means that. Um, Yes, you can do things to improve your looks. Yes, you will do things that are like a proof of uh, I love myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. So um, very interesting because this Venus, of course, is going to oppose uh, Mars as well. But that's for next month. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a very good month, dear Sagittarians. Bye-bye.